Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, July 6th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the approval of Chris Vita for tumor-induced osteomalacia and approval of Finteplo for Dravet syndrome. And I can tell you that after we talk about the product, many of you are going to have some serious deja vu. We'll also talk about approval of Fesco for HER2 positive breast cancer and Dejolvi to treat rare genetic disorders that involve long chain fatty acid oxidation. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you can get the drugs that interest you. First up, the FDA approved berozumab, which goes by brand name Chris Vita, to treat patients age 2 and older with tumor-induced osteomalacia, which goes by TIO, a rare disease that is categorized by the development of tumors that cause weakened and softened bones. The tumors associated with TIO release a peptide hormone-like substance known as fibroblast growth factor 23 that lowers phosphate levels. Fibroblast growth factor 23 regulates levels of phosphate, an electrolyte that plays important roles in bone maintenance, energy production by cells, and nerve function. When FGF 23 works well, the extra phosphorus the body doesn't need is eliminated in the urine, and a normal amount of phosphorus is retained in the blood. When FGF 23 works abnormally, There is not enough phosphate in the body, and bones begin to soften and weaken, causing osteomalacia, or a softening of the bones. Crisvita helps to keep a normal amount of phosphorus in the body by keeping FGF23 activity in check by blocking its function. The safety and efficacy of Crisvita were evaluated in two studies that together enrolled 27 adults with TIO. In both studies, patients receive Crisvita every four weeks. For the first study, half of patients achieve normal phosphate levels through week 24 and maintain normal or near-normal phosphate levels through week 144. In the second study, 69% of participants achieved normal phosphate levels through week 24 and maintain normal or near-normal phosphate levels through week 88. The results of bone scans for patients in the first study also suggested healing of the bone lesions related to osteomalacia. Hypersensitivity reactions such as rash and hives have been reported in patients who took Crisvita. If serious hypersensitivity reactions occur, patients should stop taking Crisvita and talk with their healthcare provider about further medical treatment. Additionally, Higher than normal levels of phosphorus may be associated with an increased risk of nephrocalcinosis, a disorder that occurs when too much calcium is deposited in the kidneys. The most common side effects reported in adults with TIO taking Crisvita were tooth abscess, muscle spasms, dizziness, constipation, injection site reactions, rash, and headaches. Patients taking oral phosphate or active vitamin D those who have serum phosphate levels within or above the normal range for their age, and patients with severe kidney impairment or end-stage renal disease should not take Crisvita. Crisvita is also FDA-approved to treat adults and children 6 months and older with X-linked hypophosphatemia, which causes low levels of phosphate in the blood and leads to impaired bone growth and development in children and teenagers. The FDA granted approval of Crisvita to Ultragenics Pharmaceuticals. The FDA also approved fenfluramine, which goes by brand name Fintepla, 
A Schedule IV controlled substance for the treatment of seizures associated with Dravet syndrome in patients age 2 and older. Dravet syndrome is a rare childhood onset epilepsy marked by frequent and severe treatment resistant seizures associated with hospitalizations and medical emergencies, significant development and motor impairment, and an increased risk of sudden unexpected death. Dravet syndrome is responsible for an estimated 10% of all childhood seizures and estimated to affect 1 out of every 40,000 births. Fenfluramine's mechanism of action is unknown, however, it is thought to act primarily as a serotonin-releasing agent. It increases the level of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter that regulates many different functions including mood, appetite, and most recently after clinical studies, some form of seizure activity. Fenfluramine causes the release of serotonin by disrupting storage of the neurotransmitter and reversing serotonin transporter function. Fintepla will be launched through a restricted distribution program called the Fintepla REMS program. It's expected to be available through Zogenic Specialty Pharmacy Partner by the end of July. The effectiveness of Fintepla for the treatment of seizures associated with Dravet syndrome was demonstrated in two clinical studies in 202 patients between age 2 and 18. The studies measured the change from baseline in the frequency of convulsive seizures. In both studies, subjects treated with Fintepla had significantly greater reductions in the frequency of convulsive seizures during the trials than subjects who received placebo. These reductions were seen within three to four weeks and remain generally consistent over the 14 to 15 week treatment period. Fintepla labeling includes a boxed warning stating the drug is associated with valvular heart disease and pulmonary arterial hypertension. Because of these risks, patients must have cardiac monitoring and echocardiograms performed before treatment, every six months during treatment, and once three to six months after treatment is discontinued. If the echocardiogram shows signs of VHD or PAH or other cardiac abnormalities, healthcare professionals must consider the benefits and risks of continuing treatment with Fintepla for that patient. The most common side effects in clinical studies were decreased appetite, drowsiness, sedation, diarrhea, abnormal echocardiogram, fatigue or lack of energy, increased blood pressure, and salivary hypersecretion. The FDA granted this application priority review, and it also received orphan drug designation, which provides incentives to assist and encourage the development of drugs for rare diseases. The FDA granted approval of Fintepla to Zogenix Pharmaceuticals. The FDA also approved a new combination of pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and hyaluronidase, which is going by brand name Fesco, for injection under the skin to treat adult patients with HER2-positive breast cancer that has spread to other parts of the body, and for treatment of adult patients with early HER2-positive breast cancer. Patients should be selected based on FDA-approved companion diagnostic tests. HER2-positive breast cancer, which makes up approximately one-fifth of breast cancers, has too much of a protein called human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, or HER2. This growth factor promotes the growth of cancer cells. Pertuzumab and trastuzumab bind to sites on HER2 and disrupt signaling to stop cancer cell growth. Fesco is initially used in combination with chemotherapy, and could continue to be administered at home by a qualified healthcare professional once the chemotherapy regimen has finished. Fesco contains a fixed dose combination of pertuzumab and trastuzumab with hyaluronidase for injection under the skin. The therapeutic components in Fesco are the same as those in FDA approved IV pertuzumab and IV trastuzumab. The FDA's approval was based on the results of a non-inferiority study in patients with HER2-positive early breast cancer, which demonstrated FESCO had comparable efficacy and safety as IV pertuzumab and trastuzumab, except for administration-related reactions, 
which were higher with Fesco due to the subcutaneous route of administration. Prescribing information for Fesco includes a boxed warning to advise healthcare professionals and patients about the risk of potential heart failure, fetal harm, and lung toxicity. Healthcare professionals should use similar monitoring parameters as those used with IV bertuzumab and trastuzumab. The most common side effects for patients taking Fesco were hair loss, nausea, diarrhea, anemia, and asthenia. Fesco can cause worsening of chemotherapy-induced neutropenia, and patients who experience anaphylaxis or severe hypersensitivity should discontinue Fesco. The FDA granted approval of Fesco to Genentech Pharmaceuticals. And finally, the FDA approved triheptanoin, which goes by brand name Dojolvi, for pediatric and adult patients with molecularly confirmed long-chain fatty acid oxidation disorders. These disorders are a group of rare, life-threatening genetic disorders in which the body is not able to convert long-chain fatty acids into energy. Dejolvi is a source of calories and fatty acids for these patients. This is a genetic disorder, and it's estimated to affect one out of every 10,000 people in the United States. Safety data for the therapy came from 79 patients with long-chain fatty acid oxidation disorders who received Dejolvi in two studies, an open-label 78-week study with 29 patients, followed by an open-label extension study. In all, 24 patients from study 1 continued into study 2. Patients ranged from age 4 months to 63 years, and they received daily doses of Dejolvi for a mean duration of 23 months. The most common adverse reactions to the study drug included abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, and nausea. A third study, a four-month double-blind randomized control study, reported adverse reactions similar to those from the first two. The FDA previously granted the application rare pediatric disease and fast-track designations. Ultimately, it assigned a standard review designation with a Prescription Drug User Fee Act target date of July 31st, 2020. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.